Step one. This should not be a tutorial. <laughs> Crush your radio. Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer. A little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at a heavily requested video called Now Red Tutorials Be Like dot dot dot. The thumbnail of this one has a picture of, so I decided to make a nuke. <laughs> I think this is a parody of all the Now Red stuff. It's by someone named Mr. Green, which I've also heard a few people in the comments refer to him as Nile Green. Been told not to take this one too seriously, but <laughs> I think this one's going to be pretty crazy. So I recently had a go at chemistry, but my lack of knowledge and following no tutorials... Collection <laughs> flask at the bottom of the toilet. <laughs> okay, this is just painful to watch. I'm going to follow some Nile Red tutorials to see how it's done. <laughs> Nile Red does make it look so easy, though. <laughs> Making a nuclear reactor in my parents' garage? Okay, he must be joking. Today I'm going to make a nuclear reactor. He's joking. In my parents' garage. He's still joking. Here is my uranium I'm going to use. No. And I just... Alright, I'm I'm pretty sure this is a, one of those fake voiceover uh, things. Probably made using an AI or something, but... It doesn't quite sound natural, but it's pretty funny. And here we got some of that uranium glass that we saw in one of his previous videos. Interesting, this picture almost looks like green glowy oranges or some type of citrus fruit. <laughs> it on eBay. You can't buy what? How is this legal? <laughs> it wasn't an It's a good price too. Hey, you can buy anything anywhere. I mean, it's I'm not surprised if you can find someone selling uranium or at least claiming to sell uranium. Whether or not that's what you're actually gonna get is is beyond me. So I snuck into the abandoned Chernobyl military lab. Ah, he did. Okay, <laughs> this is definitely a. <laughs> this is definitely a fake voice. The the Chernobyl. <laughs> to steal some leftover uranium from 1986. How is this guy still alive? I didn't like being told what to do, so I also. <laughs> the uranium glass is pretty good. Stole some cesium from Russia. Why though? If I drop this, it would be catastrophic. On cesium being catastrophic, so it it's just a metal, it's not a bomb, it's radioactive. The thing that can be really nasty with cesium is if it was like in a powdered state or something like that where it could just get everywhere. It also can be put in solution with water, so please don't put that in the water supply. Don't grind that up and throw it in there. <laughs> that could be... Uh, Quite devastating, because cesium-137 uh, does have a gamma as well as a uh, beta emitter. So, you drink the stuff, that beta is going to cause all kinds of internal contamination damage to your inside. So, you, you don't want to use cesium-137 for that. Now, what cesium-137 is used for is it's a very common calibration source for a lot of radiation detectors. I used it quite a bit when I was in college, just test with cesium-137 before looking at something else. It has a very characteristic uh, peak at 0.662 uh, mega electron volts. Just ends? Can I just try something else? <laughs> oh, this looks cool. So I just add some concentrated sulfuric acid, then sprinkle on some potassium permanganate. Okay, I can actually follow this. That one looks like it might actually be one of his videos. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know, but the, the other one, the one on the... <laughs> The nuclear one in the nuclear reactor in the basement. By the way, if you want to see what happens when someone actually decided to attempt that, uh, please uh, check out my video on the radioactive Boy Scout. I'll pin a, I'll pin that one in a comment down below. That's uh, that one's quite crazy. Totally didn't do this in my backyard. That worked pretty well. <laughs> but the coolest okay. part is when I slowed it down, it kind of looked like a mini nuclear explosion. And that's what gave me the idea to make a nuclear bomb in my parents' garage. Okay, this guy has a problem. Step one. This should not be a tutorial. <laughs> Crush your uranium. <laughs> Crush the uranium rocks in a mortar and pet. Step two. This wasn't working. <laughs> Step two. This was working. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to do very good. Um, uranium's uh, it's a heavy metal. It's your mortar and pestle I can do much. 
So I asked Mark <laughs> Rober to come help. Step three, you gotta start off by using a gas centrifuge enrichment by UF6 gas. Okay, that is not a garage. Are interconnected. <laughs> okay, are we actually going that route? So uranium enrichment, um, often brought up a few times, uh, but yeah, there's a process. He mentioned centrifuges. That's uh, one of the ways you can do it. Another way is uh, gaseous diffusion, but centrifuge is a bit more directed. So you feed with natural uranium and then the centrifuges are used to separate out. It's uranium hexafluoride because it exists as a gas and gas is way, way easier to separate than say liquids or solids. So it's just going to be based off of the rotational motion and mass. It's a very simple device, but you need a lot of them in order to enrich your uranium because uranium-235 there's not much of it naturally, so you're going to need to extract it from your uranium-238 using this gas centrifuge. And then, so you mentioned there's a tails. The tails is the bit that, when it says depleted, basically uranium that isn't uranium-235. It doesn't show you here, but you can actually recycle the tails, send the tails back through the feed, so you can attempt to get even more uranium hexafluoride that's 235 and this exists in multiple stages like you'll have where, where you see on this diagram where it goes from feed to tails this is going to go from natural to say one percent one percent to three percent i don't know these numbers off the top of my head i've never worked in enrichment but it's a very there are many many there are more stages than you see on this diagram right here i just felt like using it just to get a a general sense of things but once you get your desired enrichment um three to five percent for most nuclear reactor stuff these guys making a bomb upwards of 90 percent it's gonna need a lot of these that's actually one of the ways it was fairly easy to tell that iran didn't exactly have the centrifuges for just peaceful purposes because they had such a long chain they're clearly going for much higher enrichment in order to uh, make bombs. That's one of the things that was reported by the International Atomic Energy Association a few years back. But anyway, you put it in there, you basically cool it off to get it outside of a uh, gaseous state to get it to go to a solid state, and then it eventually gets transformed into to uranium oxide, which is used in fuel pellets. Don't know as much about the stuff for bombs. That's enrichment in a nutshell. Form trains and cascades. Step six. What? The okay, that's, that's it. Trains and cascades. Uh, trains, uh, so each separate line of centrifuges is a train, and cascades are the, uh, the feed versus the tails, and the tails getting wrapped around to the feeds. Uh, use the right terminology. That's, that's awesome for a joke video. I, I appreciate that withdrawal point was easy the uf6 was enriched to the desired amount step seven Seriously. now this is the fun part and those are realistic enough looking barrels it's not the yellow stuff with the giant radioactive symbol on that's a regular um hazardous material label that labels it as radioactive and hey it's a, it's a green barrel it's not those stereotypical nuclear waves good job for a joke <laughs> you made some yellow cake and i gotta say it tasted very high quality. <laughs> so I know this is silly, but again, I know this is a joke, but I think he got a few steps backwards. The yellow cake is actually when you just mill the ore down into, into that type of material. So it's before you go through all of your enrichment phase. So I guess that would be... In his steps, this should be step five, and step six, he can go ahead and reverse, but yep. You mine it, yellow cake, turn uranium oxide into the uranium hexafluoride. The whole purpose of the gas is just to make it easy to enrich. Then you convert it back, you put it into fuel pellets, and then the fuel pellets make electricity. Or in the case of this crazy video, you, you make it into a bomb. That's the less than peaceful, less than desirable use of uranium. The link in the <laughs> so anyway, we uh, what is that? now he's attacking our eardrums with some kind of bomb base. Uh, yes, clearly a critical step in making a nuclear bomb.
Started loading the uranium. Step nine. My parents' garage got a little crowded to test the new. So we had to oh, no. location and start preparing. Step ten. Now we release the lift off and abort. <laughs> just this little. It's just a light. It's not even a. It's not even a switch. It's just a light indicator. <laughs> Revolutionary step for a home amateur chemist. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I think I'm done. I'm done watching that red tutorial. I don't think I want to follow along. <laughs> oh, that is so crazy. Okay, yeah, as, as I figured, text to speech device. I claim to be him. <laughs> These experiments are super dangerous. Do not attempt them. I wouldn't attempt doing his regular stuff, let alone the crazy stuff that you see in this particular <laughs> parody stuff. That was very well done for someone who, again, probably a lay person looking up stuff on a nuclear fuel cycle. I like the the images that he used for <laughs> for centrifuges and the barrels, though. That that was that was pretty good. I like it when we can just laugh at a bunch of silly nuclear things though that that hard base out of nowhere kind of threw me off i hope now red got a kick out of this this is this is pretty good thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time